man came up on the street to me on the street. Man came up to me on the street <laughs> with a, a wound on his arm. His arm had been torn open from wrist to elbow, and I could see muscle like tuna meat and a bare bone. I didn't want to touch him, so <clears throat> I responded that I didn't have a job. He was asking. <laughs> He was asking for 70p to get to the hospital. I watched him. <clears throat> I watched him go and bother a couple of other people while I stood and chewed gum. Then he came back over and asked if I could spare some gum. I couldn't refuse, really, as there I was chewing some. I gave him three sticks and made sure to pass them over without touching my skin to the wounded man's skin. But then I wasn't so worried about it because I remembered another time a man had come up to me with the same scam, a wounded arm. You'd think I would have remembered right away. You know, this sort of stuff, it's all George Lucas's fault. <laughs> Billy Haynes wakes up in Red Bluff. His shirt and hair are soaked. In one window, the ghost of the clock reads E I colon E. He looks through the windshield and sees a long haired hitchhiker come out of the convenience store, staring hard into a pair of lottery tickets. They'll win if he stares hard enough, Billy thinks. Billy strips off his shirt, which is blossoming with sweat and fresh blood. They shouldn't just be sleeping out in parking lots in strange towns, Billy thinks. He panics a little. I could have gotten stabbed by some crazy fucker while I was sleeping. I need to get back on the road and fight sleep with coffee. He tosses the bloody shirt on the floor in front of the passenger seat and then plucks a fresh shirt from his duffel bag in the pitch dark of the back seat. The new shirt reads, Kid Fest, across the chest, in multicolored letters. Billy takes a glimpse at himself in the rear view mirror that spies a girl bicycling by in the road behind his car. She sports a black halter top that gives him half a heart on. He worries for her sexiness out at this hour and her alone. He says a prayer for her. He closes his eyes. He opens them. The ghost of the clock reads, E.O. Colony. Billy thinks, I need coffee. He starts the car, and the radio is in the middle of a mariachi song. The mariachi sings, Salmon. Billy drives in the opposite direction of the freeway exit and arrives at a donut shop. There are no other buildings beside the donut shop in the convenience store. As he parks in the donut shop parking lot, the girl goes by again, still on her bike. The wind from an open back window brushes him. He looks back over his shoulder and is panicked to see the open back window. He thinks, what if some crazy fucker dropped in a rat? that's hiding under the seat and bites me on my Achilles tendon when it gets to have a chance. I can't be sleeping and letting my guard down in any old parking lot of any old exit along the freeway. He struggles into the donut shop. The lights inside are on too bright. He looks back at his car through the glass door and sees the sign on the glass door reads, Pen to Haas. Beneath the slopes of the glass cases, the donuts 
are dried to look like monkey paws. The Mexican man in the back room calls out that he'll be right there. Billy stands in the puddle of himself. On the television, in one upper corner, dancing girls that are every one of them sultry, or so it seems to Billy anyway, dance. The semi-hard on swells and disappears, swells and disappears. He looks back at his car through the glass door. He shouldn't have left his wallet on the dashboard. He shudders to think he could have been stabbed while he was sleeping. He thinks, I always used to get the great sex in my charming way back in, back in, back before, back when, back when. Billy shakes his head. Then to keep away the creeping, dawning terror, he keeps the thoughts, the thoughts of how I could always make them break vows of celibacy they'd made after too many bad boyfriends. And I could always coax them to give up their virginity if they still had that after too many years of religion. And I could always seduce them out of The Mexican came out, and from the open door of the kitchen, a song warbled that was the same song Billy knew from the radio in the car. And it went, He lashed a lila comigos, he lashed a topasta, he told a What do you want? asked the Mexican. Billy picks out three donuts. He picks out a size of coffee. Through the glass door comes a white man. Whitened to translucence, and with dark hair and shifting coils, with a big bare fish belly, with no shirt beneath a leather sleeveless jacket, with pants of thin cloth for lounging in the Mediterranean or in the heat of Red Bluff, and the white man's also coated with a film that blurs him and marks him as bad and crazy and a fucker, and the white man has a knife bouncing against the thigh with a blue mesh holster. Billy produces a $20 bill, and the white man is now close behind him, even closer that Billy has to reach around the white man's presence to get a lick for the coffee, to get a straw to stir the sugar. The white man is against his back when Billy gets the overdose of change that comes from a $20 bill, clashed against the cheap three donuts and the cheap coffee. Billy prays and prays and prays and hopes the white man doesn't get any bright ideas from the sight of all that Change. Billy is driving, tasting a coffee like soap, eating a donut like the dried up old lopped off paw of a fucking monkey. His car passes the girl in the halter top on the bicycle. She's heading in the opposite direction. He says a prayer for her. He gets a semi hard dick because of her nice tits. He reaches the entrance of the freeway. A cluster of hitchhikers stands around the sole metal leg of an arc light each of their faces in cowls of shadows. His car joins the stream of the freeway. The mariachi on the radio sings, Sula lamento conmigo, Masada estalada donde. A rat under the seat bites into Billy's ankle. He squeals but grits his teeth and holds on to the next exit. He exits, he screams and cries and screams. He cloverleaves heading back for Red Bluff. He tucks in his shirt to think about wiping his ankle but the shirt is already bloody. Billy Haynes wakes up in Red Bluff in the convenience store parking lot. In the window, the ghost of the clock reads E.S. Colony. He thinks, I could have been stabbed by some crazy fucker. He starts the car. There is a mariachi on the radio while the mariachi sings Mora Marlene Shirt is damp with blood. He takes it off and rubs some blood in his hair and jerks it. 